In this video, we're going to talk about fractions when variables are involved. Now, the main thing to keep in mind is that the overall rules, whether it's adding fractions, dividing fractions, simplifying them in general, the rules don't change just because they're variables. It's just uncomfortable at first the first time because you're not used to it, but eventually you get used to it. So let's just take a look here, for example. If the question is to simplify this guy, 7x plus 10 over 7, how would we simplify it? Now, right off the bat, one thing that's a really common thing to do in fractions is canceling, canceling things from the top and the bottom. However, the thing to remember is you can only cancel something from the top and the bottom if the thing you're canceling is multiplied to the entire top and multiplied to the entire denominator. So here the problem is, even though the top and the bottom both have a 7, and while the 7 is basically multiplied to the entire denominator, the numerator, the 7 here, is only multiplied to this first term. Terms are what's separated by pluses and minuses, and so here are the two terms in the top. Because that 7 doesn't apply to the whole thing, we can't really do that. On the other hand, if this question was like this, with the parentheses around this x plus 10, then the 7 is applied to the whole thing on the top and the bottom. And so in that case, you could simplify to just x plus 10. But here, you can't really uh, do that. If you did want to cancel this with this, the way to do it is to first break uh, break up this fraction. So here you could rewrite this fraction as 7x over 7 plus 10 over 7. Now, the reason we could do this is literally the way we add fractions in reverse. New day, new question. If I gave you this and said add this fraction, you would say, all right, well, they have the same denominator. So I keep the denominator as 7 and then I add the two numerators. There you go. So one thing to get used to is doing that process in reverse. If you wanted to break down a fraction, you certainly can uh, with the same denominator, and you could just split up the numerator, right? So once you do that, now looking at this term, you can do uh, cancel the sevens, and so that would then just be x. So then you have x plus 10 over 7. So that's, that's the only way you can cancel the sevens. Otherwise, you can't just directly cancel them to get x plus 10. Anyway, now let's take a look at another problem. Let's look at this guy here. Now, overall here we're subtracting fractions, and so that means that we're going to have to look for a common denominator. And here, these three, uh, these two are different denominators, and so we can't just directly add or subtract these, the fraction. So what we got to do is multiply each term by whatever you need to. Usually it's just the easiest thing to do is the other guy's denominator, right? So here for this term, we're going to multiply by the other guy's denominator, the x minus 1 on the top and the bottom, so x minus 1 on the top and the bottom. And similarly, here for this term, we're going to multiply it by the other guy's denominator, which is x plus 3 on the top and the bottom. So now when we do that, let's see, this first term just becomes, so we have a 5 times x minus 1 which we can actually, well, let's distribute that out. That's going to be 5x minus 5, right? Distributive property over the denominator is x minus 1, x plus 3. You could foil that out if you want, or we could just leave it like that for now. So that's this term. Now this second term, let's do the same thing. So we have a minus in between. And for the denominator, notice it's the same denominator as the first guy now, x minus 1 times x plus 3, all right? But now the numerator here, we could distribute this 2, 2x, and then 2 times 3, so that's going to be 2x plus 6. All right, so we have this, and now finally we have it in the form of two fractions, both with the same denominator, right? We have the same denominator, which is x minus 1 times x plus 3. So the new final fraction is going to have that same denominator, x minus 1 times x plus 3. But for the numerator, now we could just do this guy minus this guy. So that's going to be 5x minus 5 minus this other guy, 2x plus 6. Notice a really common mistake that people would make here is they would just uh, they uh, forget to distribute this negative. So that negative applies to everything in the numerator. So technically, when you distribute it out, it's negative 2x minus 6. So here, when we do the next step here for this guy, 
that's going to equal so we have 5, so we're going to simplify that as 5x minus 5, which is distributing this negative. That's going to be minus 2x minus 6 rather than plus 6, all divided by that same denominator, x minus 1, x plus 3. And finally, we could go one final step and combine like terms on the top and say 5x minus 2x is 3x, so that's 3x. And then we have minus 5 minus another 6, so overall that's minus 11, over, and then that denominator, x minus 1, x plus 3, and that's, that's how you can simplify. That's how you can add or subtract fractions when there's variables involved. All right, now last question. Let's look at this guy. All right, now here, you, you know, the, the instinct then now should be, all right, well, you have two different fractions, and so we got to make sure you have the same denominator because we're adding them and the denominators aren't the same. So maybe it might be easy. You might think, you know what, I can multiply this guy by, you know, a two on the top and the bottom or something, and then that'll be the same. And while doing that would work, one thing to see is if we could, uh, you know, save a step by canceling this two. Now, it might seem like, you know, you can't uh, because you don't really see a two that's multiplied to the whole numerator. But if you look a little bit closely, you can ask yourself, can you factor out a 2 in this numerator? So the easier way to do this would be to say, all right, looking at this numerator, if I factor out a 2, I'm left with 2x minus 1. Right? So this is just 2 times 2x minus 1. And the denominator was 2p. Plus we have this guy's 8p plus 1 over p. Well, now the 2s can cancel because it's multiplied to the entire numerator and an entire denominator. So this fraction is really just 2x minus 1 over p plus 8p plus 1 over p. And now they have the same denominator, so adding them is easier. Notice one thing again. It might be tempting at first, like, oh, yeah, canceling the p's in the second term. But again, you can't because this p doesn't apply to this other term. If it was, you know, 8p plus 1p, then, yeah, then you could factor out that p, cancel it. But here it's not so you can't. Anyway, so now that we have it down to this, adding these two fractions, they have the same denominator. So the final answer will have that same denominator, p. And the numerator is just going to be add this guy and this guy. So you get 2x minus 1 plus this 8p plus 1. And you could simplify that a little bit because the negative 1 and the plus 1 uh, cancel each other out. So you're left with just 2x plus 8p over p. And that's your answer.